the part of the message. Okay, so today we're going to go over controlled post marking aircraft. This is the project we've been working on since 2018. So actually, we're right at the four year mark. It was a three year project originally. And actually, I owe it to James for even getting this award. Um, he talked to Brian Holmanson directly, and I don't think you knew him at the time, but he said, you, ought, you need to fund this. And it kind of grew out of some work from the Air Force uh, where we had looked at some similar things, and this was kind of taking it one step further. So um, uh, anyway, it started in uh, 2018, uh, June of 2018, I believe, and so we're right at four years. It was actually a three-year project, and we got a one-year no-cost extension. Um, and we have put together a website here that goes over most of the work that we did on the project, and I'll bring that up here in just a second and show you what it looks like. Uh, so the motivation for this whole uh, project is the fact that uh, the Department of Defense uh, would really like their next generation of fighter aircraft to be tailless. Uh, and by tail, it's meaning that they don't have a vertical tail, right? And so these are concept drawings from, uh, I think they're like Northrop and, and Lockheed. I know this is a Boeing. Um, I think that's a Northrop drawing, but um, anyway, so, but the challenge with tailless aircraft is obviously how you can control yaw, right? So uh, traditional aircraft have uh, rudders, a vertical tail and a rudder. The vertical tail is used for yaw stability. The, the rudder is used for uh, yaw damping and yaw control. And um, so how are we gonna do that on the next generation uh, fighter aircraft? And so there's a lot of different things that uh, have been explored. Um, you know, a lot of these uh, concepts have two engines. So you can do thrust vectoring, for example, differential thrust, or you can uh, have different uh, flow control devices out here that, um, that uh, like spoilers and things like this that uh, create uh, different yawing moments on the aircraft. And anyway, it's a it's a real challenging problem. And you guys are all familiar with the B two bomber. B two bomber does it by doing these split flaps here out of the uh, wingtips. So it's basically a drag device, right? So you put drag on one side and you get a yawing moment. So, um, so uh, our the the point of our work then was to study. Uh, specifically, what can be do, what can be done uh, if we could manipulate the lift distribution on the main wing by twisting the wing at different locations? Um, how could we? Uh, uh, how effective is that in controlling yaw? Um, and in addition, we also have to still control roll and pitch, right? So we can't we can't lose our control over those two axes, but we want to add the yaw axis. Okay, so these are our research questions. How effective is active wing twist or morphing for controlling roll pitch and yaw on a tailless aircraft? And can active roll pitch and yaw control be demonstrated on a tailless aircraft? So we identified four objectives uh, for this work. The first one is to identify relationships between wing morphing and aerodynamics of tailless aircraft. Number two, characterize the morphing input parameters that produce the desired control outputs. Number three, assess the accuracy of the predicted relations using canonical wind tunnel tests. And number four, evaluate the control relationships on a full free body dynamic system. Okay, so these are our objectives. And um, the way that we approach this uh, kind of follows this, um, this methodology here that's outlined. So you're going to see a lot of analytic work that we did up front, and some of that we started with the Air Force and then continued on this project uh, for the Navy. Um, anyway, and that kind of hits the, the first two objectives up here. And then after we had studied this analytically and, and somewhat simultaneously, we started looking at uh, numerical predictions. So using numerical methods and also study this problem. Um, we went to model assessment to make sure that our codes were um, accurate enough, that, you know, trustworthy. And then finally, demonstrating this using uh, free body dynamics. And so, uh, and originally, actually, we had proposed to do this in flight simulation and in flight testing. Um, but uh, we, we kind of ran out of time on the simulator side and put our efforts into flight testing. So, um, uh, anyway, so you're going to see all of this stuff today. We're, we're kind of going to go through almost in this order of analytics, numerics, uh, model assessment. We'll touch on briefly. When we're talking about these numerical predictions, you know, we'll, we'll show how well our models are working, and then, um, and then we'll end this afternoon actually with a flight test. And this is a really, it is a, a truly
true flight test. This is not a demonstration. We're testing something today that we've never done before on the aircraft. So, um, so you'll be able to experience that this time. Mm -hmm. Have you done any wind tunnel tests? We did uh, do wind tunnel tests. And originally, when I wrote this, we were going to have, we we're going to team up with Air Force to do the wind tunnel testing. I don't know if you remember that. I mean, this is years ago, but when we laid out the grant, that was what we were going to do. And uh, that uh, we realized wasn't you know, really work out very well. And so uh, we did have some, we had a lot more wind tunnel tests planned, but we had to scale that back significantly. So we have a tunnel here that I'll show you if you want to do a tour. Um, but uh, we didn't do it nearly as much as we had hoped. Okay, so the final goal is to see if we can develop a control algorithm that looks kind of like this. So uh, in blue here, we have what a traditional control algorithm would look like on an aircraft using an autopilot system. So you have some desired trajectory that gets fed into either the pilot knows what the trajectory is, where we're trying to go, or the autopilot does, right? And the autopilot is going to command uh, roll pitch and yaw on the aircraft to try to follow that trajectory. Uh, this goes to what we would call a discrete geometry change that changes your ailerons, elevator, rudder, whatever. Um, and in turn, that affects the aerodynamics, the force of moments on the aircraft. Those aerodynamic forces uh, generate some six degree of freedom dynamic motion of the aircraft. But then, you know, then we circle back and we see how well we're matching that trajectory and we go through the loop again, right? So this is just a real basic autopilot system. Um, and so what we wanted to do was create a system for this tailless aircraft that um, that would seamlessly plug into current autopilot. So that the autopilot or the pilot wouldn't have to know that they are flying a tailless aircraft. There's nothing different that is required of them. So basically, the pilot or the autopilot is going to still command roll pitch and yaw on the aircraft. And instead of doing the normal discrete geometry changes with these control surfaces, uh, it looks up at using a, a, a reverse magnetic control algorithm. It looks up and decides how it's going to distribute this control across the main wing, um, or how it's going to twist the wing. It's going to command that that geometry change. That's going to create the aerodynamic forces of moments that then give us this stop dynamic motion that it's hoping that that was expected from the roll pitch and yaw inputs. Does that make sense? So we want to make a plug and play. Uh, for a traditional autopilot system. And so um, anyway, you'll see today the process that we go through in order to get to that point. And, uh, and again, in the flight test this afternoon, the pilot just has a, a traditional RC controller. He's got, you know, roll pitch and yaw on his sticks. And uh, so he's not doing anything different, but the aircraft is making decisions of how it's going to create roll pitch and yaw just from the main wing. <laughs> All right, um, a word about terminology. So, um, so morphing, you're going to hear the word morphing thrown around, and, and that's kind of a buzzword uh, that can mean a whole lot of different things. And so, today, I just want to be clear about what we're talking about. Um, when we talk about morphing, we're really talking about the shape of the wing. How do we change the shape of the wing? Not the span, not the sweep. Uh, we're looking at uh, specifically twist within the wing. And, um, and there's different ways you can twist the, the wing. So, the traditional way, if you look at the, if you take a slice of the wing, look at the airfoil, um, the traditional way to twist the wing is to deflect a portion of the, um, um, to deflect a portion of that is called a control surface. And uh, we, that's usually a rigid body rotation. This is like a, a flap or, you know, whatever you see on a traditional aircraft. Um, and so it looks something like this, right? So this is how a traditional aircraft do that. But really what you're doing yeah, from an aerodynamics stance, we call that wing twist because it changes the zero lift angle of attack of this uh, airfoil section through here by deflecting that. So it's a, it's a very similar um, effect as, uh, as actually rotating the entire airfoil. Um, anyway, but this is how it's usually done. And um, so we're today, uh, our morphing version of this is going to be a conformal flap instead. So uh, we're still going to have a, a hinge point type of thing, but then the trailing portion of that actually gets deflected uh, in a conformal flap uh, method. And uh, anyway, we'll be going over that in more detail. So this is one thing. In the core-wise direction, we're not looking at articulated. We're looking at conformal flaps, and there are some benefits to this. Um, the conformal flats. And then in a span wise direction, traditional aircraft have discrete uh, locations where they're deflecting. 
And, uh, and we're going to be looking at the differences actually between discrete and continuous. You could have a continuous trading edge. Uh, the Air Force has looked at this, um, a couple of different projects, and then uh, and NASA has also looked at this. Several, several groups have actually looked at this continuous idea here. But um, anyway, so we'll be talking about discrete control surfaces, continuous control surfaces, articulated and conformal. And these are, uh, we just want to be, the, be aware of this terminology. Also, I'm I actually, Maya, I'm, I'm confused about the terminology about the twist okay. because the normal twist is con involving the leading edge yeah. rotation too. Yeah. But this here is all um, the controlling the tails, but the leading edge probably the passive rotation because of the, the trailing edge. So I don't know if it is going to be the right <laughs> term to use a twist because uh -huh. we are not doing this, but we are doing this, but because of the error load, it might be yeah. kind of deform a little bit, but yeah. it was not active. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, so there are two types of twists. So we lump this all into the same thing as aerodynamics, but there are actually two different ways to perform twists. Uh, one of them is called geometric twists, and that's where you actually rotate the, the entire airflow, right? And so a lot of aircraft have what we call washout in the wing where the roof is at a higher angle of impact instead. So that's a physical twist to the wing, right? And then just like you're saying, under aerodynamic loads, the wing is going to naturally twist in flight due to the torsion in the wing, right? Um, so that's what we call geometric twist. And then this is what we call aerodynamic twist, where we deflect a portion of the airfoil or we change the camber. Really what we're doing is changing the camber within the airfoil. We're only changing it on the back portion, but we could have, we could have changed the, the camber across the entire airfoil, right? I mean, just it's because you, you are connecting the leading edge and the trailing edge. Basically. Like in that yeah. Case. Yeah, that's exactly okay. right. So, and, and what this does is it changes the aerodynamic properties in a similar way that actually rotating the, the airfoil does. Um, and there are benefits to both ways. And so we use some, some kits and so on and others. But actually from an ideal aerodynamic standpoint, so from a, if you completely ignore viscosity in the flow, those two mechanisms, either physically rotating it or, or changing the camera, do the, have the identical effect on aerodynamics. But, but once you add viscous effects, then they're slightly different. So, so I think as an aerodynamicist, I, 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 I agree. But as a <laughs> structure designer, you care. About <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so sometimes that was, and so I'm not complaining, but sometimes I was confused about the term yeah. twist to, to because of that reason, because I'm seeing that as a structure perspective. Right. And you're talking about the aerodynamic right. perspective. So. Yeah, um, and a lot of, you'll see some of our analysis today is ideal aerodynamics, and so we just call it twist and because we don't care how, we're, how it's done. And then some of the analysis today is very specific that we're doing the, you know, the conformal flap instead of a physical twist, but you're right, that terminology is confusing because we use it for the same term both. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is our budget overview. So we are given $510,000 and we've gone over budget. Um, ben is well aware of that. He keeps spending and he doesn't know where the money's coming from. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but uh, so we did go over budget, but um, I just thought I'd show you how this is kind of split up. So uh, the dark blue here is what has been spent out of the 510 on student salaries. Um, the orange here is actually Utah State overhead that gets pulled off for buildings and electricity and, uh, you know, anyway, overhead. Uh, purple here, faculty salary. Uh, yellow is benefits. So these are, uh, you know, things above and beyond the salary. So health insurance and things we pay for faculty and students. Um, and then supplies and flight tests is this little blue area here. That should make you feel better. <laughs> And, uh, and then travel in green and tuition and fees in the, the dark purple there. So uh, anyway, this is probably the first time the students have seen how these budgets kind of shake out, but uh, this what it looks like. So benefits is not included in the overhead? What's that? Benefits? Benefits are not included in the Really? Yeah, yeah. So you can add those two together and that's really what the universities point out. Okay. <laughs> the yellow and the orange, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know this looks really ugly, how much the university pulled out, but this is actually a pretty low number compared to other universities. So some universities are over 50%, I think. Anyways. 
So we're at uh, I think 40, 45. Uh, um, well, it depends on how you capture it. Okay, so that's an overview of the project in general. Um, I want to take you to the website that we've uh, built for this. So this is on our lab website, so airlab.usu.edu. And then you go up here to projects, and this is the ONR YIP uh, project control pillows morphing aircraft. And so um, uh, this is just, uh, we've got a table of contents here where you can get to different sections of the book, and I'm just going to peruse through these briefly. Now we've got documents over here. So you can see the original proposal. These are the three annual reports, and then this is today's agenda. We'll be adding the final annual report up here as well, so that's accessible. Uh, so in the project overview, we've gone over that and the objectives. Here's some statistics. So uh, statistics on this project, we've got 11 students work on it or be partially funded on it. Uh, seven journal publications. We have another one in review and a couple more that are about ready to be submitted. Um, 119 journal publication pages, 15 conference papers with 15 conference presentations. Uh, we had three PhD dissertations, uh, three master student theses. Four public software packages that are available on GitHub. We'll show those to you in a minute. Um, two publicly available aircraft designs. And by publicly available, these are these are aircraft that can be downloaded now online for free. Um, you can get the entire design, and other people can create them um, with a 3D printer. Uh, 100 plus student advisor meetings. Um, over 49,000 lines of code. That's actually a really low estimate. I think we're probably close to twice that, but I didn't get the numbers back from all the students. So, um, so probably closer to 100,000 lines of code. Um, we've, we've gone through 18 different morphing wing concepts, 194 morphing wing prototypes, 5,000 plus hours of 3D printing, 100 plus kilograms of PLA, 13 fully 3D printed airframes, uh, we've had eight takeoffs and two purposeful landings. You can, you can do the math on the rest of that. And then uh, two follow-on studies that came from this. One of them is an NSF flutter study uh, that has been submitted with the University of Michigan, actually. Um, and uh, we're waiting to hear back on that. And then uh, second, we've got some more some funding from the Air Force, partially related to the flight testing that we've done here. And so actually coming from James, he's asked us to do more flight testing on a different project because, uh, because of what we've done here. So um, here's a list of the journal publications and you can get the links, you know, there's a link to each of these. So there's, we had seven uh, journal publications come out of this and we'll point these out as we go through the day. Um, and then I thought I'd just read off the, the name of the conference publications here. So we have 15 of these. I'll just read off the names of these, and these are actually in reverse order, roughly, of how they were published. But uh, so we've got control mapping methodology for roll pitch and yaw control on morphing wing aircraft. That's by Zach Montgomery. He'll be presenting later today. Design and performance of a 3D printed morphing aircraft from Sabrina Snow. 3D printed wings and morphing trailing edge technology from Ben Moulton. We'll be talking about that. Controlling roll yaw coupling with aileron placement and wing twist. That's Josh Brinklow will be presenting on this. Uh, sensitivity and estimation of flying wing aerodynamic propulsion and inertial parameters using simulation. So this is Jason, Jason Thurgood. Uh, we didn't have time to fit this in today, but uh, so he, he won't be joining us to present this, but this is another paper that's not. Uh, estimation of incompressible swept wing aerodynamics using low fidelity methods. That's from Bruno Warcomers. He'll be joining us today. Practical imp implementation of a general numerical lifting line from Corey Geltz. He'll be joining us. Optimization of ailerons to minimize reduced drag and roll from Josh Brinklow. Accuracy of QQMON's prediction for the looks of aerodynamic centers on swept wings from Bruno. Uh, Ludwig Crannell's 1933 paper concerning wings for minimum induced drag, translation and commentary. So this is actually one of the foundational uh, papers for this entire work. This was a paper that was published in German and uh, Warren Phillips and I um, worked on an English translation of that paper. There's a lot of misunderstanding about that paper. And so um, anyway, we, we translated it and published this at a conference. And we actually took it to a journal and they wouldn't, uh, they, they didn't want to publish it uh, for various reasons. But anyway, so it's out there. Uh, control of adverse yaw during the role for classical optimal lift distributions. Um, so Zach will be presenting that today. A general approach to lifting line theory applied to wings with sweep 
Jackson Reed, um, minimizing induced drag with weight distribution, lift distribution, mean span, and structure weight. Um, Jeff will be covering that today. Effects of sweep on airflow section properties uh, from Jackson again, and then aerodynamic center at the root of swept elliptic wings and ingress of soil. That's a uh, uh, paper by Bruno. So, anyway, we're going to be covering several of these topics today, um, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of the, the scope of things that we've covered here. And then, like I said, these are a list of theses and dissertations that have come out of this and links to each of those. These are all uh, freely downloadable on the Utah State. Um, uh, uh, dissertation uh, uh, repository. So, okay, software packages. So we've developed four packages as part of this project. Uh, MockFX is the probably the biggest one, and uh, Corey will be presenting this later today. Uh, there's also an airflow database manager uh, that Zach wrote, um, a code called Pilot. This is a flight simulator, and then PyProp, um, a, a propulsion package. Open aircraft designs. Uh, so these are uh, you can click on these, and um, this will take you to Thingiverse. You can download all of the 3D printed files uh, for anybody who wants to recreate these aircraft. But anyway, we started with a smaller aircraft, Manta, uh, just to kind of test out the 3D printing and flying of a 3D printed aircraft. Um, and so you can download that online, and this is a picture of that in flight. And then Horizon is the airframe that we've uh, spent most of the time with, and you can see it right back here in the corner, and we'll be talking about that more today. Aircraft design, print, and assembly. So conformal flap design and prototyping. We've got a whole bunch of YouTube videos about uh, that prototyping process that Ben has been through. Um, and so this is a link to, to that uh, YouTube channel. Um, here's the final conformal flap design, uh, 3D printing time-lapse. So you can see it's actually printing it. And then this is an assembly time-lapse uh, for the entire airplane. And then we've got a flight testing section. Again, we'll be going over this uh, later today, but uh, these are videos from each of the flight tests that we've had in the last year. Um, and then final uh, control mapping. This is the control mapping algorithm that we'll be flying today. And, uh, and then the list of students who worked on this project. So anyway, so there's a lot of information on the website and, uh, and Brian, um, you know, when you listen to this recording, feel free to pull up the website and, and uh, check it out. So, Okay, any questions?